Hi there, Matt Allington here. And today I'm going to do one of those videos where I actually take you step by step through a project that I wanted to have a look at. So what I wanted to do was get hold of a chart showing the COVID case rates in Australia by state. Now I haven't actually been able to find a chart that consistently is updated and gives that data. And so um, I just did a bit of quick searching. I found this site covidlive.com.au. I've used this site in some of my other videos. And notice that we do have total case numbers here by state. And then if I was to drill into one of the states, so this is the ACT, you can see here that there's a table telling me by date how many cases there are. I'm assuming this is the total accumulated cases and how many new cases. So this is the data that I need. But one of the complications is if I, let me just expand this particular page here. So, okay, we've got some advertising here. Now, if I go to that page, you'll notice that the state identifier, in this case, it's a territory, the state identifier is hard coded in the URL. So this page contains all the cases for ACE and T. But if I come up here and change this to New South Wales, then this page contains the data for New South Wales. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a function that extracts the data from one of these states. And then I'll write a query that passes a list of all of the state names through to the function and get the function to operate multiple times, eight times or nine, depending if we've got all the territories in there. So let me go ahead and show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start with this um, state, New South Wales. So I'll copy that and I'll go to a blank Power BI file and I'll say get data from web and I'll paste my URL in there. But in actual fact, what I'm going to do, even at this point in time, is I'm going to hard code a parameter in here. So um, I'm going to go to the advanced stage. I'm going to do a new parameter, and this parameter will be state. And I'm going to start off with the value NSW in this parameter. Now, I could have set the data type, I didn't do that. And then I'm going to change this URL. So now the URL is made up in two parts. We start off with the, the base URL, and then we append the state parameter to the back of the URL. And when those two things are combined, we'll end up with uh, the full URL that I'm going to use. Okay, so I'm now looking at the web page, And if I come in and have a look at these suggested tables, I now need to find the table of data that I'm looking for. And this is it here. So there's a table called new and cumulative confirmed cases. So I'm going to take that and I'll go transform data. Okay, so I'm going to rename this. I'll just call it something like um, one state. I like to give it a name, sort of just describing what it does. And so at the moment, this query is giving me the data for New South Wales. But if I come up and change my parameter and place Vic in here, which is one of the other states, then the query will get executed again. We'll go to the Vic page rather than the New South Wales page. And all things going well, we should now see the Victorian data. And there we have the Vic data. So now that I've got this query set up, I need to turn it into a function. Now to do this, you must have a parameter embedded in your query. And in my case, the parameter is embedded in this um, web.browserContents step. And so I'm now going to right click here and say create a function. I like to give it a name fn one state. So this will go ahead and turn the query into a function. And now I can trigger this function by typing in a state prefix. So if I type in sa and go invoke, it will go ahead and fetch the data for sa and so on. And so that's how I can invoke the function. So I'm just going to delete that. And I think what I'll do before moving on is I might just do a bit of cleaning up here. Now it's important to note that this query and this function are basically joined at the hip. So any changes I make to this query now will automatically be inherited inside this function. When you do it this way, you should never come in here and edit the function because if you do that, you actually break that relationship between the query and the function. So Power Query will manage this for you as long as you don't manually edit the function. So I won't do that. So I'll come back over here. Let's do a little bit of cleansing. This state looks good. This is the new cases. Um, I can profile the data and see that there's an empty string here. 
Um, I've also got this dash, so I need to do a little bit of cleaning up here. Um, so what I think I'll just do is filter out anything that I don't need. Um, this is an interesting number one. Let's just leave it in. So we'll get rid of, I might leave the zeros in for now. It's not clear to me the difference between net and new. I'm going to assume that new is the correct data. So I'll get rid of these columns. We've got a number here and I need to, I might keep the cases. This is the total cumulative cases. And now I'll turn this into a whole number. It should do that successfully, even though it's got commas in there. And I might just rename these. This is um, new cases and total cases. I should be able to build the total cases from the new cases, but given that there was those two columns, I'm not really sure whether the data is perfectly aligned between the two columns that I'm choosing to keep. So I'll leave it that way for now. Okay, so now I've got my function. The next thing I need to do is I need to invoke this function once for every state in Australia. And so to do that, I'm going to create a new query. Um, blank query. I could do this in Notepad or in Excel and import the data. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually type in the list of states. And so this is the list operator. And so, for example, I can come in here and say New South Wales, comma, and Vic. And I'll just do two to start with. And this will give me a list of those two states. From there, I turn it into a table. And once it's a table, I'm going to call it state and I'll change it to text. And so you see, I've got a few steps over here, but I'm starting with a manual list and I end up with these two states. So I'm just going to fill out the rest of the states in Australia and then we'll proceed. Okay, so that's the list of all states and territories in Australia. And I'll come back to the last step and there I have it. Uh, now, I need to keep this lowercase because if you remember, the URL was lowercase. But ultimately, when I go to use this data and load the data, I'll probably convert this over to uppercase, which is a more common uh, usage for the different states. OK, so now I've got this list of states. I can add a column and invoke a custom function. And so the new column will invoke the function. And I'm going to pass the value in this column, which is the state column, through to the state function. I'll click open. And then that should go ahead and run that function eight times, once for every row in my table. It'll take a little bit of time because loading the data from the website takes a bit of time anyway. And there we have it. We have one table for each state. And now I'm going to expand and I'll turn that off and extract the data for all states. All right, at this point in time, now I can come back and change this to uppercase. So I'll just come up here, transform, format, uppercase. So I'll just do some tidying up. I need to change the data types here. So I'll just multi-select and do a detect data type. That should get it correct. I don't like this uppercase, so I'll change that. Okay, so what I should also be doing is because I like to have a star schema, I should um, extract the state and build myself a calendar table. So I'm going to rename this. This will be my data table. So that's my data table. And I'm going to set this query so it doesn't load. And I might actually use this as my state table, this will be my dimension table. Okay, I can't call it that. I'd like to call it state, so what I'll do, so I'll rename this one, and then I can rename this one. All right, so I've got my data table, my state table. I need a calendar table. So whenever I need a calendar table, I just search for my Power Query calendar table. And here's my article, build our reusable calendar table. And so this is step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a calendar table. But down towards the bottom, I've actually got um, the code. And you can just, I just come in here and cut and paste it. And back here, new query, blank query. So 
switch to the advanced editor and I'll just paste my calendar table code in here. Now on my website, there are actually two types of calendar tables. There's one for the calendar year and one for a financial year. So I'm just going to keep the calendar year version and go ahead and load that. Of course, I need to rename this. And I need to get my start date correct. So I'm just going to take a chance here that it started on um, sometime in 2020. So let's go to my start date and I'll change this to January 2020. You should always have complete years in your calendar table starting from the first day of the year and going through to the end of the latest data, the end of the year of the latest data. All right, so I think that should be all. So let's go close and apply and have a look at the data. Okay, so there's the data loaded. I'll jump over to the model view and create the relationship. So we've got a data table. The date comes up here. Now I've left, this is wrong. I didn't complete this. So let me just quickly go back and change that query. So this is pretty common, you know, you make mistakes. So what I've done here, I have the data there. Now I've actually forgotten where I'm at. So I'm going to jump up here to the query dependency view. And let's have a look at what I've got. So go full screen. So I'm connecting to the website to load the data using the function. I've got a calendar, the state parameter loads one state, and then I end up here. So this is wrong. I need to go back and take a look at that. So this one state file, this one state query, actually I've joined into that a little bit too late. I need to come back. In fact, what I should have done was I should have connected here. This is the information that I need. And so what I'm going to do now is at this step. So here I've got my list of states. So I'm going to take this invoked custom function. I'm going to right click extract the previous steps that will split the query into two and I'll call this my state staging. So this query will still work, but now I have this other query called state staging. I can use this in two different places. So I don't want to load that. Don't want to load that but I do want to create another query. So I'm going to go here, just delete this one because that was incorrect. And I'm going to reference this one and this will be my state. This will be my dimension table and I'll change it to uppercase. And I think that's all I really need. So now we'll close and apply. Pretty common to make you know errors you're sort of focusing and thinking about one thing you miss something so i'd say this is pretty consistent and common now note that the data table is regenerating and that's because i split the query into two queries using a staging query and so therefore the whole table uh, reloads and regenerates just in case there are any changes that have impacted that okay so now i've got my correct dimension table and you can see the relationship was automatically generated. I do like to come into the data table and just hide the columns that are on the many side of the relationships. We should be using the columns from the dimension tables. So just hide that one and I'll hide that one. All right, so let's go and have a look at the data and see whether it's doing what I need. So I'll just do a line chart and I'll bring my calendar date on the X axis and I'll bring the new cases on the Y axis. This is the new UI. And so this looks like, and it should be in fact, the accumulated cases in all of Australia. And what I might do is put a slicer out here and I'll bring the states onto a slicer. And now I should be able to have a look at an individual state. 
and so that looks uh, pretty good and I could also do some different things with the visualization I could compare two states together but that's achieved what I wanted to achieve I can now publish this to powerbi.com and have it automatically refresh on a daily basis and now I've got a permanent up-to-date chart showing me the cases by state